What is going on? Welcome to the DeFi DGEN podcast number 19, almost on our 20th issue today. We're having a very exciting episode for you. First of all, I'm here with Ian once again. What's going on, dingoes? What's up, what's up? <laughs> so, sorry, this is actually Monday night we're recording this because MailChimp, MailChimp had an issue. Their servers were out all day yesterday and some part of this morning. So we were kind of working around that. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. If you were expecting this newsletter Monday morning, you most likely will get a Tuesday morning or, or tomorrow morning, whatever. But hopefully that's, I'm, I'm sorry about that. MailChimp, what, what, what are we doing here? But anyways, let's go ahead and jump in today. We're going to be talking about news, Canada freezing crypto wallets and the implications of that. That's why we have crypto. We're talking about Ukraine, Russia a little bit. Sandbox Vox editor, which is like a free editor to create digital uh, digital items in the sandbox ecosystem. And then we got Flashbots. We got Flashbots profiting profiting from MEV. What does MEV mean? Ian? Minor extractable value, which we will get into later in this podcast. Let's go. Absolutely. And you know what? And we got some reaction content for you. And we also, you know what? We're, we'll do this right now because if you are watching this as a subscriber, I'll be also announcing this in the uh, VIP or in the exclusive Discord. And that is if you go to my TikTok, click this link in my description right now. Um, it will, first of all, it will bring you to a free PDF. Go ahead and get that free PDF. And that's already in the exclusive discord It's the intro to DeFi free PDF. But then you can also cancel your original subscription and then resubscribe at $9.99 a month, right? Resubscribe at $9.99 a month. Um, we, it's just what we're going to do. It was a sale. I feel bad about uh, giving out sales and then not telling y'all. So that's what we're doing. Um, at, if you want to resubscribe at nine ninety nine rather than nine rather than nineteen eighty nine, uh, there's your opportunity. And let's go ahead and jump into it and look at the market. Let's do a little refresh because a lot of things are developing as we speak mm -hmm. in terms of Russia and Ukraine and the price action of those things affect uh, those things affecting the price action, right? Um, so. You see the stable coins going up in value, leading the pack. <laughs> so we're just basically, basically everything, basically everything in their mother is down to date. Um, let's see the biggest losers real quick. Great Red X down big, the turn torrent, just all across the board. I mean, damn, tough, 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 tough. Box. Curve. Man. That's tough. Anything, anything you want to point out, Ian? Just, just looks like a sell-off across the board. Not even really much that you can say about Bitcoin versus alts. Uh, even the blue chips are taking taking a hit here. So, definitely, just I think is a sign of the macro uncertainty. There's so many things happening. So, many, so uh, we'll see how things shake out over the next month. But um, definitely going to be a lot of volatility ahead. Yep, macro uncertainty is probably the primary factor. Um, along with Vitalik, actually did say he, he's ready for a prolonged bear market. Vitalik is ready. He said that at ETH Denver. Um, he's ready for it. Once again, it does look like the ETH foundations to the top are pretty freaking close to the top. So maybe take that into the next bull market with you. They've done that twice. They've done that in the previous bull market and this bull market so they are pretty good at selling the top the eth foundation look at when they're selling they're pretty good <laughs> at it but anyways let's jump into open sea fishing attack so uh, it was a huge fishing attack where people lost about 1.7 million dollars worth of nfts this uh i believe this was this week uh mm -hmm. anything you want to bring up about this pretty straightforward yeah, pretty straightforward. I mean, as everyone knows, make sure that you're you're uh, getting an email from a legitimate source. So that was ultimately what happened here. They clicked on a fake email and connected their wallet to a fake site. Hacker got the access. And um, what was interesting, I thought about this actually, was the hacker waited until the open CTO is talking on stage. And then he committed the 
exploit while he was talking. Um, mm. Maybe because he couldn't really respond quickly because he was in a presentation or maybe because he was just kind of trolling him. But um, Right. That is interesting, man. I did not know that. But once again, don't click links, random ass links you get in your email. Make sure on your uh, right, right website. That's basically it, guys. That's basically it. Uh, now, next is the – it's pretty messed up in my personal viewpoint, obviously, to each their own. But I don't think there's many scenarios where freezing – they don't only freeze crypto wallets. They freeze bank accounts, too. They've been freezing bank accounts of normal individuals that are just protesting, right? That are just protesting whether you agree with the protest or not. Uh, I personally do not believe that anybody protesting – shouldn't have their funds frozen that's just hey that's just what's what's up what do you think about it ian obviously you might have a different point of view i i think it comes down to whether they're being violent or not if it's a completely peaceful protest i do not actually am very 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 much against that because how are they going to buy groceries if their you know bank account is frozen um and just do basic things right pay so, bills pay fucking bills Exactly. And, and it's a right for them to peacefully protest. So right. I think, um, you know, obviously in the extreme case of someone's being super violent, it might be, uh, I think there's probably even better ways than freezing bank accounts, right? Just go and directly and arrest them. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm personally very against it. And it, again, just kind of highlights what crypto is able to unlock. Right is ultimate freedom, ultimate ability to handle your assets in the way you want to handle. Nobody being able to be like, hey, you can't move your money. Hey, you don't, you can't have access to your money anymore. And that is what, as long as you don't have it on a centralized exchange, right? If you have your crypto assets on a centralized exchange, we'll see what, I mean, they have control, they have custodial, they have, co oh, what is it? Yeah, they are custodians, yeah, right? They're custodians yeah, yeah, exactly. of crypto, right? So, anyways, and also, they reached out to a lot of uh, a lot of providers, a lot of uh, financial intermediaries, and then they also reached out to Nunchuck, which was, is a self custodial, collaborative, multi sig Bitcoin wallet. So it's kind of like MetaMask a little bit, a, a little sim similar to MetaMask, and they responded to the Ontario Superior Court of justice justice saying we are a software provider not a custodial financial intermediary our software is free to use it allows people to eliminate single points of failure and store bitcoin in the safest way possible while preserving privacy we do not collect the user identification information beyond email address so non-kyc we cannot freeze our ass user as assets we cannot prevent them from being moved we do not have knowledge of the existence, nature, value, and location of the user's assets. This is by design. Please look up how self custodia custody and private key works. When the Canadian dollar becomes worthless, we will be here to serve you too. Sincerely, the Nunchuck team. So pretty savage. Um, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> that's fucking savage. Um, but any thoughts on that, Ian? Not, yeah, no, I like it. I like it. And that um, I, I think it's important for everyone to uh, make sure whether they, you know, that obviously there's pros and cons to having a, your money on a centralized exchange versus a non-custodial wallet. Uh, but I think the best way is to really learn how to secure your funds on the non-custodial wallet and make sure that it's safe. Uh, but ultimately, you just want to make sure that your funds are secure in whatever way uh, you can. So... Uh, definitely Absolutely. yeah be careful about that for sure yeah um anyways moving on to ukraine and russia tensions between russia and ukraine are heating up russia basically invaded peacefully invaded or just occupied the two eastern uh, uh, districts providences republics i believe republics is the correct word so they peacefully peacefully occupied the two uh, most eastern republics. Uh, basically, the Russian separatists they've had primary 
control over this area for since 2014, basically, when Russia took annex Crimea, Crimea. So they kind of just moved some troops into that uh, area. So the, and the invasion technically has started. Will they continue western into the non? Russian area, the non-Russian, like a lot of the people that lived in that Russian separatist air controlled area were, they considered themselves Russian, right? Mm -hmm. But if you move fa farther west, it's not like that, right? So it's not like that, especially once you get it. If we look up map of Ukraine. So part of the Republic that they're taking over is pro-Russia and part of it's against it, you'd say? Um, it, so separate control area. That's pretty much where they moved into right here. But there's a river running right, be, like this river right here. See it? Mm -hmm. Right. So this river basically um, divides between people, like primary uh, anti-Russian sentiment and uh, probably majority pro-Russian sentiment over here for the most part. So that Russian, that, that river in Crimea is down here, which is Russian now. So, um, but yep, that's pretty much it. And they have invaded, they have invaded the separatist controlled area right here. So we'll see what happens with that. Interesting. And another couple side effects that uh, we wrote about here is the invasion of Ukraine could also cause energy prices to skyrocket, which is something I was not thinking about, which could affect Bitcoin's hash rate negatively. Russia could suffer sanctions associated with the war. They are, yeah, they're definitely getting sanctioned. Uh, like executive orders are coming out. War between Russia and would likely to the capital leaving the, okay. So devaluation, of the Ukrainian and Russian currency, which we were talking about, which is kind of like coincidental that they adopted cryptocurrency, like Ukraine adopted cryptocurrency as a legal tender just like a couple weeks ago, and Russia did as well. So very, very strange things that is happening. Did Russia like of officially adopt crypto as currency like legal tender? Do you know? I believe I believe they I believe they did. And mm -hmm. I think what might be the angle that they're looking at is maybe a way to, you know, exchange uh, their rubles into Bitcoin and then exchange that into other currencies instead of using the dollar as a medium of exchange for currencies. OK, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like that. I mean, I'm sure there's nuances that we're missing, but that sounds about that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, moving forward from war. And uh, the, we'll see what happens with that. We'll see. Obviously, I don't think anybody really wants to go to war. But also, China and Taiwan. We'll see what happens with that too. Yeah. And it's getting nuts. But anyways, Melania is back with more NFTs. But this, this isn't really news. Whatever. They're not going to sell. It's just weird that Melania is doing NFT yeah. launches and then Donald Trump buys it with his digital wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is around Valentine's Day, so it could be one of those things. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but any any thoughts you want to bring up on this? I think it's pretty straightforward. Baloney yeah, pretty, going on. pretty straightforward. Solana, Solana NFT, you know. So, yes, they are on Solana, which is kind of an interesting choice. Maybe Solana has the most Trump Trumpers on there. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Biggest gainers, nothing. Stable coins are the biggest gainers this week. Yep. But anyways, Sandbox Vox Editor, you want to take this one away, Ian? Yeah, sure. So this is interesting. This is uh, basically a 3D modeling animation program that allows uh, any user, it's a free software, to create uh, game assets. So there's someone created a plane, right? And um, anyone can create these game assets and then export them to the Sandbox marketplace. Um, and they can actually sell these uh, NFTs. And, um, you know, it's it's pretty interesting because if you think about the sandbox metaverse and the potential for it to become a really big uh, place where a lot of people are interacting and transacting, if you're able to create a large amount of digital assets or get really good at creating digital assets, um, those could actually eventually become high in demand. Um, and so 
I think I think one common theme among people that have been able to make money in crypto from you know 2017 and even before is that they were very willing to uh, interact with DeFi protocols and experiment. And I think this is one way to do that within the metaverse is to start uh, you know doing things like uh, playing with Vox Editor and seeing where that leads you. Uh, that alone might make you money, but I think it'll also teach you a lot about sandbox and a lot about the metaverse in general. And you might be able to see other areas that you could uh, you could get into. And um, overall, I think it's just something that's interesting to do, given you know where the the pet potential for the metaverse is headed. Kind of thing. I I, I haven't actually Sorry. done anything Sorry. myself, but. Damn, the Wi-Fi here sucks, man. I think we're breaking <laughs> up a little bit. Okay. But anyways, mo- what 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 <clears throat> what were you saying about Vox Editor? The la- last part, like the last couple. Oh, just the last part. I was mentioning that I haven't actually used Vox Editor myself, but I think that's going to be something I'm going to try this week. Uh, just create an app, maybe throw it on the marketplace, just just to play around. What with are you gonna make? Who knows, man? Maybe I'll make something for Snoop Dogg's parts. Snoop Dogg has some land, so maybe I'll make something for Snoop Dogg, like a joint or something. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. I like it. Make it, make him a hot Latina or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, for but... real. <laughs> <It's> hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, Snoop Dogg's like a funny. I like him a lot. Anyways, let's see. Biggest losers, Solana. That doesn't match up. I don't know. These links might be bad. Mailchimp have have uh has been sucking ass, so it probably didn't. F- All right, yeah, those gotta get fixed. But anyways, moving on. So big losers. What's XRD? Bro? What's XRD? Uh, that's Radix. I'm not really sure what it does. Oh, it's a layer one. It's a layer one. Okay. We've been hyping off. That nobody uses. I hate when people hype up layer ones. Nobody fucking uses it. That nobody just, uses yeah, it. Right yeah, it has no, no utility. Yeah, absolutely. Sand is down, like we just were talking about. We're talking about sandbox, so actually it's fucking in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. And then what's been told? I haven't heard of that. Oh it's yeah, too. it's bit torrent old. Uh ah. not really sure. Oh, BitTorrent old, bro. That's just that they're old. Token. They must have uh, had a new token. Yeah. Yeah, hard fork. That doesn't count, bro. What's that? Some sort of hard fork. Um, I don't know exactly what happened, but it's also on Tron. So let's see what their new token's mm. on. So it might be on a new chain or something. Let's see here. BitTorrent. Is it actually on Tron? Let's see. It is on Tron. Tron man sucks. <laughs> I don't know anybody that uses Tron. It's all scammy stuff. Like, what is this total supply? What is this total supply? What is that? What is going on, bro? Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Building a better internet for people, information freely and safely. Customer support. Tron has really. All right. Yeah, I'll stay away from BitTorrent. It sounds like trash. Okay. And then flow, flow, flow is down again. Um, flow flows kind of trash too, to be honest. A lot of trash out there that uh, showing itself. Although yeah. I think flows, yeah. I think Flo, oh, what the frick, dude? Flow has some good partnerships, but I don't know if we need a whole nother chain for NFTs. Right. What like just like if uh, NBA Top Shots were on Open Sea, bro. Oh, I get it. Be a lot better. Nobody wants to do it on the flow blockchain. It's trash. Yeah. They need a bridge to bridge over to OpenSea or something. But anyways, let's go into some reaction stuff. X X two Y two had an airdrop similar to Looks. If you guys weren't aware of Looks, if you did over thirty Ethereum in volume, you get a hundred X two Y two tokens, which is like a thousand dollars. If you have less than thirty volume, it obviously goes down from there. So, yeah. So if it's like a, I'm pretty sure it was trading around a thousand dollars X two Y two or one dollar. Let's see here. X2Y2, 
And nope, it's down 50%. <laughs> what is happening? Why is it down so much? I don't know. Well, I guess it's only $7,900 or $790. But I guess that's better than nothing. Hopefully gas fees aren't too bad. Um, maybe they, maybe X2Y2 was a Ukrainian project. No. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, this is another cool thing. We have, uh, uh, this is a Shopify store. Ooh. Let's just watch and see what's up. Interesting. So this is a Shopify store. You hook up your digital wallet. It gives you special benefits if you have said NFT in wallet. So you get certain discounts, you get certain free shipping access. So once again, your previous his, your historical transactions in your digital wallet, along with NFTs and digital assets that you own, will give you certain privileges along with put you in a demograph that people will try to, hey, in that demographic that I want to target as a company, let's give them a coupon. Let's give them a NFT that gives them special access to something. That is the future of marketing. Mm -hmm. And if you learn how to do that, if you learn how to do that, I'm sure you could probably reach out to a lot of companies and be like, hey, here's my idea. Here's my experience. Let's fucking do it. And let's be the first to do it. And I think that's going to be a huge thing probably in the next two years. Uh, any thoughts on that? I thought that was really well said, and I haven't really thought about it, but that makes so much sense. Um, and right. Shopify is a good site to do it with because it's very standard and a lot of entrepreneurial people using it. So it seems yes. like a natural fit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Totally agree. And let's see. Did we go to the last article? Flashbots profiting from MEV. I've heard of MEV so much over the last year, and I haven't really figured out what it was. I haven't looked into it. I haven't done enough research on it. And right now, we're about to learn. We're about to learn. Ian's about to teach us. Take off. <laughs> yes, sir. So I'll give a little bit of background. Um, so MEV is <laughs> mostly available on Ethereum. And it's, it's commonly known as minor extractable value. Some people think it should be called, called maximum extractable value, and I'll tell you why. Mm. So it, it's from the idea that on Ethereum, miners can choose arbitrarily the ordering of transactions, right? So you, put, you um, post your transaction, it's pending in a mempool off chain. And all the miners are able to look in the mempool and choose which transactions they want to include in their block yeah. quickly yeah. what's a mempool a mempool is just a pool that's off chain that that uh holds all the pending transactions so when your transaction is pending it's in the mempool and all the miners are able to view the mempool and they can say okay which transactions should we include in the block and obviously miners are in it for profit right so they're going to choose the ones with the highest gas fees typically uh, but they can also uh, do things like front running. If people are familiar with uh, front running in the traditional financial markets, they can see, OK, this is a big trade. Well, how about I buy an asset and then I'll include this trade and then I'll sell. I'll include a sell transaction afterwards. Right. So that's one way. But most of the MEV that's extracted today is actually through third party bots called searchers. Um, and they're able to view the mempool and then they're able to uh, do these transactions and they're able to influence the ordering of the transactions in the blocks by adjusting their gas fee. So this has a number of negative externalities when it comes to the user experience because uh, there becomes these things called gas wars where bots are bidding each other to include in the transaction up until the profit that they're expected to get. Uh, so it increases slippage, it increases gas fees uh, for users. And so Flashbots saw this as a problem, right? So what is Flashbots? All Flashbots does is it takes your transaction and rather than submitting it to the mempool, it gives it directly to miners that are participating in Flashbots. So mm -hmm. there's a couple cool things that can happen here. One thing is that obviously you can't, get front run sandwiched back run by bots and by miners. But also uh, if a transaction fails, 
it can just be reverted without you having to pay gas. So it's it's a good transaction execution management just to have, but also you can sign up as a searcher um, through Flashbots. Why does Flashbots want to do that? They basically want to democratize access to MEV because uh, whereas before it was very a closed system and it was very centralized. So it actually um, gave some security issues to the Ethereum network in terms of centralization. So they're democratizing uh, access to MEV and allowing anyone to create algorithms that can search for MEV. Um, and so at this point, it's very technical. You have to understand how the Ethereum network works. You have to understand how to profit from these transactions. But um, with uh, you can actually kind of set it up so that you're not risking any funds, right? So the only way that you would execute a transaction is if it makes money and you don't risk your gas fee. So that should give you some license to experiment a little bit. And um, their suggestion was to uh, basically implement this very basic uh, algorithm and then understand every line of that code. Make sure you go through it. You understand what's happening. Learn more about the technical uh, side of the Ethereum blockchain. Learn a little bit of Node.js, right? And basically just allow your curiosity to fuel you and uh, tinker around. And then um, most of the opportunities are what's in what's called the long tail, right? So it's in uh, maybe a new protocol pops up on mainnet. Okay, go into that protocol. Is there Are there any transactions that would allow us to extract MEV? That's probably where you're going to see most of the opportunity, given that there's a lot of large players in arbitrage, liquidations, uh, sandwiching some of the more common techniques. So um, it's a really cool space and uh, Flashbots is a cool way to get started. And if you do it the right way, you're not really risking any capital. Um, really all you need in, in your externally owned account, which is basically just your MetaMask that you're using, all you need is the base fee associated with the transaction, but you get to keep that base fee if the transaction fails. So it's kind of a cool way to learn more about the network in general and potentially make money if you uh, are creative enough to come up with a strategy that that you know makes some money. Yes, I've all that's. I mean, that was very well said, Ian. I mean, I <laughs> it makes a lot more sense now. It makes a lot more sense. I've also heard of people finding arbitrage opportunities between decks using ME, um, but I don't know exactly triangular arbitrage with just price differences. Also, I'm sure you can integrate flash loans so you don't even risk your capital whatsoever. You're you're not necessarily risking anybody's capital. Um, it, you're just using a large amount of money from a pool in a flash loan, which means it has to be repaid by the end of the transaction. So yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of ways you can use MEV along with... Um, uh, I wonder if you can use... A, Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to brainstorm yeah. a little bit. Yeah, you you um you were right about the um the arbitrage and it also helps. So they call Ethereum the the mempool like a, a dark forest because it's very very competitive at this point and it's very technical. And you were right about um, the arbitrage opportunities. Those are pretty have pretty well known. So you have to be pretty technical for that. But I think using a service like Flashbots is important because you can actually find MEV opportunities, but if you if you put that transaction to the mempool, there are arbitrage bots that will literally just calculate the profit that you're about to make from that transaction, and then they'll just bid a higher gas price than you to be included in the in to, to have their transaction included before you. So it's very competitive space. I think Flashbots is a good tool. And you, they'll, they're also, um, they have a Discord that you can hop into and people are very helpful there as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, that was that was very interesting. And I did not know half of that shit. Very cool. But anyways, anything else for today? I think that's just about it. Any best reads, top 10 NFT sale, sushi swap? Um, let's see. Crypto token fund. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess a uh, big takeaway from there is there's a lot of investment Obviously, uh, people knew that, but I think I think VC funds are finally just, you know, just sending it. Right. I totally agree. Uh, we got to fix the 
we got to fix the biggest losers and probably the biggest winners as well uh links but other than that i think we're all set for this week sorry about the day late once again mail chimps uh, their servers went down they tweeted about it but i think we're good to go anyway once again if you want to get this newsletter exclusive discord the reports that we put out um all the, all this stuff um you can just go ahead and go to my tiktok link the link click the link tree go through the first page it's free and then subscribe using this and then cancel the previous subscription and then you'll be 9.99 per month for the rest of whenever you decide to cancel or whatever right so that's probably a quick thing to do that will help you out and anything else for this week id crypto no i think that's it for i think that's it for this week all righty well i appreciate each and every one of you until next time peace out peace